Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for May 16th, 2022, recorded on 4, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical system to be forming in the Caribbean or southwestern Gulf of Mexico over the next five to six days, and a look at what to expect for the upcoming 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Could be a very busy one out there. First and foremost, I am releasing my Hurricane Safety and Preparedness e-course. This is just a screen grab of the introductory slide here. This will be available on Wednesday afternoon, uh, right around about 4 p.m. or so. It will be announced in my daily Hurricane Outlook and Discussion video on Wednesday. And you will be able to find it on Etsy, Skillshare, and YouTube members. And cost will be just about $10 or so uh, for these uh, e-course lessons. This will be the first of many e-course lessons that I plan to do, so if you want to, you will be able to see a behind-the-scenes look at what goes on before, during, and after I chase hurricanes, how to stay safe, how to even chase yourself, and some basic spotting and chasing guides for you. So that will be available on Wednesday. Please like this video, subscribe, push this out to all of your friends. It would greatly help what I do. Anyway, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not much is occurring right now. However, we do have a tropical wave, and this tropical wave is somewhere within this general vicinity. It's a little bit hard to tell, but it has come through the Lesser Antilles and Trinidad and Tobago, and this is now getting ready to cross over from South America into the Caribbean here, closer to Central America. This is as part of a larger Central American gyre that is setting up. You can already see enhanced rainfall in a localized area of convection with all of these clouds in here. This isn't part of a larger Central American gyre. Basically, what I'm talking about, we have westerly winds coming in here, meeting with the easterly trade winds. And because of that, it is creating this localized area of enhanced vorticity. And this is what often sparks early and late season development, especially in the Caribbean, and is notorious for producing extreme rainfall for portions of Central America. And we can also tell that this is also kind of getting stretched up here all the way into the Bahamas and even into the southwestern Atlantic here. So this is a very wide, expansive area of convection across this entire area, which Central American gyres are notorious for. Now, if we take a look here at the upper ocean heat content map, this is updated as of this morning. And again, we haven't talked about this in a while, but we touched on this yesterday, and I want to kind of revisit this today. And this is very important for deciphering and really kind of picking out where the best areas of warm water is. And we're not just talking about warm water at the surface. Warm water at the surface is part of the equation, but you have to have warm water at depth because hurricanes like to churn up the water. And if you have very cold water just beneath the surface, it's not going to really help intensify or maintain a hurricane, especially a strong hurricane at that. And so you really need warm water that extends down in deep into the ocean. And that's kind of what we're picking up here, especially on these warmer colors. The lighter shades of blue here these coral colors into the green teal and the yellow oranges and reds here as you get towards the right of the scale this is increasing upper ocean heat content and this is basically saying that the water depth the warm water extends pretty deep below the surface and it is very warm and so where you see these higher numbers reflected of course in the caribbean down across here and in the gulf of mexico here the eastern gulf where we've had this very persistent warm eddy uh, that has been over there for the last several months, really. And it's been able to create its own little upper ocean heat content and its own warm water source. Uh, so we've been able to kind of see that maintain itself. And most of the island chain now and all the way into the southwestern Atlantic, even some of the Gulf Stream here, really anywhere where I'm shading in here and then all the way back out here in the, the southern part of the Atlantic, has a fair shot at seeing, um, at least theoretically, seeing tropical cyclones in the sense that these water, uh, these upper ocean heat content and water temperature depth, it could support a, a tropical system. Of course, not saying one's going to develop, but because we have a system that may develop, it's important to kind of look at this. This is one of the tools that we look at here. 
And if we progress this forward into the actual sea surface temperatures here, so this is not the anomalies, this is not upper ocean heat content, this is the actual sea surface temperatures. And we are now seeing water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico that are very conducive for, for tropical cyclones. In fact, we can see here where the 28 degree isotherm is. This is lines of constant temperature. And the 28 isotherm, you can see this warm eddy that's kind of just moving up here. And this gets pretty close to the coastline here. Now, of course, we have cooler waters here uh, near the shelf waters of the Florida Big Bend area. And this is to be expected because, again, the shelf waters are very easily mixed up. It doesn't take a lot of wind or additional disturbance to mix up these shelf waters. And that will, again, begin to erode over time over the next you know couple of weeks and we'll see these be replenished by warm water so again this is cooler but not substantially cooler we're not seeing water temperatures like we see off the coast of florida here off the atlantic coast where water temperatures are 23 celsius which is below what is needed for tropical cyclone formation and maintenance and then of course down here in the southwestern gulf as well water temperatures almost always are pretty warm and certainly 28 celsius 29 celsius especially down here off the coast of the yucatan uh, is certainly something to kind of be mindful of if we have a system within this general vicinity over the next several days and why we think there might be a system combined with the upper or not with the upper ocean heat content but combined with the central american gyre that we've been talking about is the velocity potential anomalies. This is the unfiltered uh, velocity potential. It's at 200 millibars. So we're talking about the cruising line of airliners about 30 to 39,000 feet above the surface here. And we notice that a large area of upward moving air shaded in these blues and purples here, this is indicative of upward moving air in the atmosphere. And you notice that we have suppressive air right now over the, con uh, over the, the continent there of Africa. And so what we're kind of looking at is this will continue to propagate towards the east with time. And again, we could see an uptick in tropical wave activity over Africa as this begins to shift over. But we have a large area of upward moving air mainly centered over the Caribbean and East Pacific. And then when we jump down to the Kelvin wave forecast here, we have a very strong Kelvin wave. And what a Kelvin wave is, it's basically on the scale of what a Madden-Julian oscillation is. And if you're unfamiliar with that, Madden-Julian oscillation is a large area of upward moving air. And so you can see we have a large area of upward moving air right now centered over South America and the Caribbean and parts of the equatorial Pacific. And this is somewhat, a Kelvin wave is somewhat similar to the MJO. However, the Madden-Julian oscillation is much larger and slower time phenomenon where a Kelvin wave is spatially, generally speaking, it is smaller and quicker in the spatial, uh, in the, you know, the time distribution there. We have a pretty large Kelvin wave centered over the East Pacific right now, and this will be moving into the Atlantic over the next several days, and this could help to definitely kickstart activity. Again, we have had a very suppressive Kelvin wave over this part of the uh, world for a little bit now and then we're getting these enhanced upward moving air so that might definitely help to kind of kickstart something over the next several days so what's all the buzz we've been talking about certainly uh, we talked about it yesterday and other accounts have been you know tweeting and making videos on this etc so here we are this is the gfs forecast this is the 12z run valid for 8 p.m this evening and right now, again, we're continuing to really just watch this area of the world right now. This is the area where I would be watching for tropical development. And what we notice here is on the GFS forecast, at least, again, we have what seems to be a pre-existing disturbance that is right now over South America, exits and moves into the Caribbean and is making a beeline towards Central America and that begins to coalesce over the next several days. And, you know, we have a Central American gyre that sets up and something tries to spin up on the northern end of that into what appears to be a tropical cyclone, at least on the model. 
Now, we talked about how this is certainly a little bit confusing because the forecast is confusing here. And if we jump up here at about 500 millibars, we'll be able to kind of see what we're looking at here. So if we go up to the 500 millibar heights here, we notice that we have a building ridge of high pressure that is going to be mainly over the, sub, the subtropical ridge here, basically. And this big subtropical ridge is basically forcing the air movement into Central America. And thus, it is really decreasing the potential for anything to get carried northward because we don't have a weakness to be able to force anything north. And over time in the model, this big old ridge of high pressure is still sitting here. And there begins to be a weakness on Sunday at this point, maybe a, a narrow, you know, break in this where something could get ejected northward. And in fact, on the GFS, you end up with somewhat of a low pressure system that develops down here and maybe makes its way northward from there once the ridge begins to break down. But the other problem with that, though, is if we look at the 200 millibar wind here, this is off the GFS ensembles. So here is the upper level anticyclone that we've been talking about over the last several days. And this is going to be so far displaced from, from anything that tries to develop. In fact, you can tell here, even by hour 162, the GFS ensembles have a very unanimous agreement that the overall wind pattern is going to be unfavorable for tropical development. You can tell that there's a little bit of a trough axis that's kind of digging in through here, maybe a little bit of a short wave. And any upper level anticyclone is going to be over the East Pacific. So there honestly might be a better shot at East Pacific development rather than Caribbean or Southwestern Atlantic development or Southwestern Gulf of Mexico development because we can tell that the vertical shear is just going to be blasting through this region. And that's partly caused by this upper level anticyclone that is displaced and creating shear uh, over top of whatever tries to develop in this region. And if we look here at the ensemble mean sea level pressure, there is certainly still a signal for something in here at this time. But we notice over the last several days, this signal has been gradually decreasing with time and has been most of the clustering now is focused within this general area. And, a, and some of that clustering, in fact, is now pushed over Central America. So this definitely leads me to believe that I don't really believe that we'll be seeing any sort of tropical development, at least within the next couple of days or so, especially not within five to six days, because I certainly believe that whatever is going to happen here gets pushed into Central America. Now, in the long run, this is the European ensembles and the European ensembles out to just about hour 170 begin to show that there could be some development in the medium to long range, either in the Eastern Pacific or maybe some members trying to spin something up here in the Bay of Campeche or Southwestern Gulf of Mexico, but it's just simply too far out and we don't really have the answers to that at the moment. So I'm not really so sure that we're going to be seeing tropical development within the next five to six days. Is it certainly possible? Yes. Um, but it's becoming more and more unlikely as the you know days progress that we'll be seeing any sort of development over the next several days. So I'm not really um, concerned about that right now. And to kind of further reiterate this, this is the European Ensemble, the mean 200 millibar velocity potential anomalies. So again, this is departures from average here. And just to kind of get your bearing straight, everywhere in the oranges and reds here, this is uh, suppressed air. And the greens, blues, cyans, etc., this is all upward moving air. And this roughly corresponds as you go down in time here. As you go down in the chart, you get to about June 26th. And this roughly correlates to the part of the world that we're talking about. So we notice right now that, again, as it stands right now, we are going to have a pretty active phase here of, of upward moving air centered where? Mainly over par parts really of the Eastern Pacific and parts of the Atlantic. And then as we progress through the beginning of June, we start to see that there is an increased amount of upward moving air generally centered from about the Caribbean 
area all the way over towards Africa. And that continues through the end of June based on the long range European ensembles. And this right here would actually be a pretty favorable look because there is suppressed air, generally speaking, over the East Pacific, upward moving air over Africa. And this basically would allow for organized tropical waves to potentially come off of Africa here. Now, whether or not they do something, obviously, it is not necessarily likely that we see significant tropical wave development in the month of June uh, or late June out there in the deep tropics because it's typically not what we look for. But could there be a sign definitely in the Caribbean or something? Absolutely. And I think that's kind of where we're heading. So this would be a very interesting time indeed um, if this comes to verify. But again, this is definitely the long range over the next 46 days. So you know, take this as a grain of salt, but certainly something to look forward to in the future. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow.